friends and family, brothers and sisters on YouTube world. It says that we are live, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, go ahead, James. Okay. Um, so uh, my first question is, um, how long, in your opinion, has the, the corporate elite uh, or the globalists or, you know, the, the, the many different terms that we use for the, the, the people in power, how long have they actually been in power in, in the position that they are now? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if we got to really go back to 85, about 8,500 years, really, because, you know, my research indicates that there was this intervention in Samaria at about 8,500 years ago. And the Anunnaki, uh, came to this earth to enslave us basically and to mine us and to mine our earth and to take our stuff you know so the first king was in Samaria it was King Sargon before that we didn't have kings and queens we didn't have nobles and royals and all this stuff where you think just because of your blood just because of you know your bloodline you have the right to sort of live on the lamb and live in a big palace and everybody's supposed to pay your way and then they're supposed to bow down before you and this kind of thing we didn't have the hierarchy system we didn't have you know people lived as hunters and gatherers they were free everybody was equal the status of women was much better um the status of men was much better the status of everybody was much better and everybody pretty much got along for hundreds of thousands of years it's that 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 timeline's being pushed back all the time as far as how many years humans have been on this earth right so something happened and it's it, you know the only way that i've been able to explain it logically is that this was this intervention of course uh zechariah sitchkin was able to translate these sumerian clay tablets which is the oldest language we have access to on this planet it's a cuneiform language and uh, others have accessed it as well it's uh Samaria is iraq so during the iraq war you know, this whole area around Basra where these tablets were being dug up was all of a sudden off limits to researchers, you know, right at a time when people were starting to clue into this stuff because David Icke started talking about it. A lot of people started talking about it. And um, so the first thing they did in Iraq, it wasn't they didn't even go to the central bank and give it to the Rothschilds, you know, right away, which they did second. But the first thing they did was they went to the museum, remember? And they took all these artifacts and that's because they have to hide this history just like they burned down the alexandria library in cairo later on to burn down the evidence of who these things are so you know anyway they the tablets talk about a lot of things one of the things they talk about is how the anunnaki enslaved the sumerians into agriculture and made them feed the cities of babylon and ur and and all these cities that were then ruled by anunnaki or anunnaki hybrids King Sargon was the first king. Um, king Marduk was shortly after that, and he set off to India, where he uh, also enslaved people into agriculture. And it's no coincidence that all agriculture on this earth started at the same time everywhere, because these people, these things spread out to different parts, and they built these huge temples, you know, like to call like you know, Machu Picchu, like uh, Angkor Wat in Cambodia, all these things were built at the same time, about 8,000 BC. And agriculture started in the Indus Valley and started in China and started in Central America, Mexico, South America, all at the same time. So did the domestication of animals, which uh, hadn't occurred before that, right? So some big event happened that enslaved us into agriculture because agriculture, I'm a I grew up on a farm, it's hard work, you know? You get tied to it you feed the world and it's not appreciated and it's hard work and um it's way harder than being a hunter and gatherer it's such a you know you use about eight hours of your of your week hunting and gathering and those people had a lot of leisure time and they didn't have to go to a job and they didn't have to pay the bank you know back their debt which all farmers do nowadays so so all this stuff happened at the same time and then the same bloodline um moved into uh moved into egypt and moved into uh from babylon they moved into the caucasus so it went two different directions and in the caucasus it was the the baccarat family that ran the show and that became the bauer family and that became the rothschild family so all these fake jews these people that are living in israel right now these ashkenazis they're not jews they they wrote the talmud at that time which is horrible and hates jesus and you know is 
anti-Christian, anti-Jewish even, anti-everything, anti-life. It's satanic is what it is. And um, and then the Baccarat family began to trade with the Lee family in China because the Lee family is also one of these bloodlines. All these bloodlines, this bloodline crown is not all Europeans, you know. Some of them are Chinese. Some of them are, are Asian, like the Khan family in Pakistan. But there's these, these bloodlines are one bloodline. They just have different names. But you have to understand there's not like 13 bloodlines like, you know, Fritz Springmeier said there was or seven bloodlines like, you know, people have tried to say how many bloodlines. Well, I heard a royal biographer when Queen Elizabeth died at her funeral. They were interviewing this royal biographer with Burke's peerage. And he said they asked him a question on CNN. This was everybody could have heard, heard this if they had ears to hear it. They said, is, is this blood? Is this are these royal families in Europe all related? And the guy said, yes. And they are. They're all related. So they're inbred to the max and they and they fanned out all over the world to, to, to take different parts of the world under their control. So the Baccarat traded with the Lee family and that was the Silk Road trade, which was pretty much a slave trade, a drug trade, you know, all kinds of nasty stuff. So the other branch went to Egypt and they became the pharaohs and and the same bloodline. In fact, you have uh, you have figures in in Egypt that match Enki and Enlil, who were the Anunnaki commanders and probably were those guys. And these were, they were cone heads. Look at them. I mean, they, they had these elongated skulls. So this is where the elongated skulls come from that we're starting to find everywhere and they're trying to suppress. And so the pharaohs ruled Egypt. They never spoke, you know, Arabic, the native language. None of them did. The only one that did was Cleopatra, the very last pharaoh. And what happened, which we're not told about, is there was an uprising in Egypt against the pharaohs because they hated them. The, the local people hated them. They were being enslaved too to build all their pyramids and all their crap. And so they rose up against the Egyptians and Cleopatra was deposed. It was a revolution. That's what really happened. But Cleopatra then uh, had an affair with, with Mark Anthony, but also uh, with Julius Caesar. And Caesar um, then went and burned down the Alexandria Library. That's that's common knowledge that he's the one that did that. Destroyed all the records of where these people came from, the bloodlines and all the control and and everything. And they went across the Mediterranean and reestablished their empire in the Holy Roman Empire in Italy. So then the Catholic Church had started up. Jesus said Peter was his rock. He said, go start my church. And that's what Peter did. So Peter went to Turkey and started a, a very simple church out in the middle of the desert in the Anatolia region. And within 200 years, that was taken over by Constantine the Great at the Council of Nicaea in 225 AD. And they changed everything that the Catholic Church stood for. For example, Jesus never wanted to be a Messiah or a savior. He wants you to be your own savior. He, he demands that we step up. And by saying that, you're shirking off your responsibility to Jesus to take away your sins. He didn't want that. He said, you guys don't put me on a pedestal. You guys do your thing. You have to follow my way, my truth, and my light. My way being live simple. You know, no possessions in the mountains. Don't value possessions. You'll get possessed by them if you do. The truth, which means calling truth to power, which he did the money changers which he did with the, the animal sacrifice that started going on in the temple he said no more blood sacrifice they still do it in every you know every church now celebrate it he said he, and he called down the illuminati and the habsburg family that's where constantine the great came from he's a habsburg so the habsburg family actually killed jesus they have the spear of destiny in their castle in belgium that was used to kill him and that's it to them it's a it's like a prize you know and so it was a murder and so then they said, <coughs> also, some of these papal bulls that came out of that said, you know, we're going to celebrate Easter now. Easter never used to be a happy time. I mean, they killed Jesus on Easter, man. I, I can never, I grew up in the Catholic Church. I can never understand what's good about Good Friday. What's going on here? It's not good. They killed Jesus that day. I could never understand that. And, and, and they changed it. And it wasn't. It was a time of mourning, great mourning, until they changed it. So they, and then they started issuing all these papal bulls. To where they could justify their control of resources around the world they hid behind the catholic church this is where they began to hide behind the catholic church so then about 1300 a.d you had uh, pope clement catholic pope 
um and you had uh king of france and they got together king philip and they and they went after the knights templar because the templars were the first to have the ships and the templars never worked for the catholic church that's a myth they worked for the bloodline they've always worked for the bloodline their first headquarters was at the al-aqsa mosque which nowadays it's the al-aqsa mosque it was the temple mount they moved into the palace that king baldwin he didn't build it the freemasons aren't builders they don't build anything they just occupy things they steal things they're thieves okay so they went in there and they stole the al-aqsa mosque turned it to the temple mount the muslims had built it the saracen muslims were were a pretty advanced society way more advanced than the european society at that time and and they built it and they and they got stolen so king baldwin was a bloodline Habsburg and he moved into the palace and then he put the Knights Templar in the in the west wing of that palace and that was their first headquarters so it's a huge misconception that the Templars work for the church the Templars work for the bloodline just like the Freemasons work for the bloodline they work for the crown they work for the crown of England now and that's who that's who they represent so anyway um yeah so we get to the point of 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 pope clement and king philip and they they went they started to see this stuff that the templars were doing which was basically going around the entire planet vacuuming up all the resources of the indigenous people and and giving it to the bloodline and because they were the knights that's what knights do right like bill gates is a knight commander of the british empire okay that officially so that means he's working for the bloodline when he comes out and buys all the farmland and tells us to take our shots and kills little kids in africa with his malaria shots and whatever he's working for the bloodline of course and 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 you know casper weinberger is a knight and henry kissinger is a knight and they knight everybody that serves them right but it's just all part of that that bloodline thing so anyway they persecuted the templars finally they they uh, they burned jocks de malay um at the stake for heresy for satanism for uh, all kinds of sodomy all kinds of nasty crimes that they had in fact committed so then the templars went underground and they took all their wealth most of their wealth to scotland and the bankers themselves the de medici family the bard family the el banco family the algo brandini family a lot of the powerful families who were you know branches of the habsburg bloodline the same bloodline but different names now they moved up to Venice and they became the Venetian bankers and they started the concept of fascism, actually, where, you know, it basically means that, OK, we'll, we'll unite as private families, clans, all well armed and we'll fend off the peasants and we'll keep them away from our stuff, you know. And, and in fact, the, the Savoy family, uh, the royal family of Italy, until they were deposed after World War II, funded Mussolini. You know and 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 so that all makes sense so then the venetian bankers um and in venice because why because it's on the water and now they had ships and so they said well there's this other place where we can be on the water and have ships and it's called the uk it's called the united united kingdom hello united kingdom so they moved all their you know they had their loot in scotland which is part of the united kingdom already so they and and when they went to venice they had started to hide behind the protestant reformation because people you know the Protestant Martin Luther says okay you don't have to do good acts to go to heaven at least the Catholics said you had to do that and you couldn't be a schmuck and Jesus is my savior and poof I go to heaven and I'm murdering people and raping people and but the, but no Martin Luther said no you can do all that and now the evangelicals of course have taken that to a whole nother level which is all controlled by the intelligence communities by the way the evangelicals are all controlled by the Freemasons and the Israelis in the same bunch that controls you know that controlled the Catholic Church for a while and still controls it to some extent through the Knights of Malta. So anyway, they got behind the Protestant Reformation. Then they went to and became the Hanseatic League briefly in Central Europe, and they started running uh, gunpowder in from, uh, this is the invention of guns, you know, and they started, you know, selling gunpowder all over Europe because they found the stuff in Indonesia and, and the East India Company had started up, the Dutch East India Company had started up, and they started the Hanseatic League. And then then they started the house of orange in the netherlands and the dutch east india company and the bank of of uh the bank of holland which was the first actually private central bank and then within a short time there was this kind of eugenics project in normandy and all the bloodlines came back together they're the same bloodline again but they have different names so the the bancos came up for venice and the 
you know, the Orsini's came up from Rome and the, the Plantagenets came from the British Isles and the, the Rala bloodline, which is the Viking bloodline, came from, you know, Norway and the Anjou bloodline was in France. And they all came together and they reinforced their blood through this interbreeding thing. That's why they have RH negative blood. And the only other place, the Royals all have no RH negative blood. It's very rare. The only other place in the world that exists is in Normandy <laughs> because that's where this happened. And also the Basque region of Northern Spain, the Basque people have this RH negative blood. It's pretty common. So from there, you know, the Templars were situated in Scotland. All their loot was there. They were hiding behind the Protestants. So what happened then, they moved all the money through when William III became king. They moved all that money into the city of London. The city of London was already part of the Holy Roman Empire. And within nine years of the Holy Roman Empire officially shutting down, just like had happened in Egypt, you know, within a few years of the Pharaoh shutting down, we had the Holy Roman Empire. Well, within a few years of the Holy Roman Empire shutting down, where London was called Londinium at that time, and was also a very strategic part of the Holy Roman Empire by the first century, actually. But then they got shipbuilding, and they put the shipbuilding there, and the, the, the major shipbuilding thing started in the 1500s. And they said, we'll move to London now, our base. So within nine years of the Holy Roman Empire ending officially, the British Empire started. Pax Britannica started. And William III was part of this. Well, William the Conqueror actually was part of the eugenics project. So he became the king of England and he conquered the United Kingdom for the bloodlines. And they said, OK, this is another place with water. It's, it's defendable. It's got a rocky coastline. The peasants can't get to us. They don't have ships. We have all the ships. Templars have the ships. East India Company has the ships. They don't have ships. So this is where we're going to operate from and be safe. And so they call it the United Kingdom. And then William the Third came in, signed the Magna Carta, which was a fraud. You know, they say it was helped the British people, but it was just kind of this agreement where the bloodline would pull in some more of the aristocratic families and cut them into the deal. Right. And it was signed on Lombard Street in the city of London, the Lombard family, again, being a huge banking, Venetian banking family. And um, and this is where he came at Lloyd's of London was the first um we're still the biggest reinsurance company in the world you have to understand the insurance companies are way more powerful than the banks uh azuriani general it's an italian company and this thing is just loaded with bloodline board members actually they were sit right on the board of these things because the insurance companies they underwrite everything and um they they control that they, they control all the drug money because they're all based in the bermuda that's where they headquarter themselves and and Bermuda, of course, is a, a UK, you know, uh, territory, but it's offshore. So William the Third, anyway, moves into the city, declares it the city of London, sort of their global power center. And then here comes the the, the wealth of the Templars right behind it from Scotland, with help from the Sinclair family or the Saint Clair family, biggest radio station in this country, Sinclair Broadcasting. They own almost every radio station in this country. It's just garbage. So. Mm -hmm. They move it into the city of London. And at that point, they lose all pretense of religion, basically. And they're done with the Catholics. They're done with the Protestant Reformation. OK, now we're going to hide behind what? Science. Right. So they start the Royal Societies because people were starting to get the gig on religion and how it was just used to control them and they didn't like it. So they said, so we're going to start the Royal Society. So they started the Royal Societies in the 1600s. All this wealth had come in. City of London was established as this one square mile jurisdiction, although the paperwork is you can't get it. You can't find out actually when the city of London was incorporated because the paperwork has mysteriously disappeared, according to everybody, <laughs> which is also interesting. So when did it really start? I don't know. But this is a one, this city of London is a one square mile separate jurisdiction from the UK, from London. It's its own little city state, kind of like the Vatican, uh, like Washington, D.C., but much more powerful. Mm -hmm. This is the epicenter of, of where it all happens. So the banks get to vote like HSBC gets the most votes because it's the biggest bank. Lloyd's and London gets the next most Barclays, you know, on and on. And, 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 and of course, so they decide, so it's not a democracy. It's a, it's a fascist territory where the bigger, more money you have, you get to call the shots. And then they have aldermen and you have to be a freeman or a Freemason to become an alderman. And this is also the epicenter of Freemasonry. It's the it's the the, the global uh, headquarters is in the city of London. Every bank has its own Freemason lodge in the city of London. 
the Lord Mayor has his own Freemason Lodge, and it's huge because they're the operatives. They're they're the recruiting territory where we get the CIA agents, where we get the F MI6 agents, the Mossad agents. They recruit from the Freemasons because they know the Freemasons are they're they're easily compromised. They have low integrity, and they'll do anything to climb the ladder and you know have their friends think they're really you know great or really rich or whatever. They just they're climber climber class. The Freemasons are the climber class, but they're expendable too. Um, so they're headquartered there. Um, and this, and this was established and all the money came in and they started hiding behind the Royal Society. So in the city of London, you have Chatham house is probably the most powerful thing. And that's where the Royal Institute of International Affairs is headquartered. And that is the parent organization for the council on foreign relations in the United States, as well as the Canadian council on foreign relations, the Australian council on foreign relations. And there's all these councils everywhere. So about 1910, you had this business roundtable convened. And this was members of what they called the Pilgrim Society. And the Pilgrim Society had already started the Empire Press Union. And the Empire Press Union was the first kind of organized media in the world. Media in Latin is medium. It means to get between you and the truth. Mm. So the media, we're not media here. We're telling the truth. So we're actually not media. Media is anything that obfuscates the truth that you know puts something between you and reality pulls down a screen and tries to, and lies to you basically and so the empire press union was another place where when the mi6 mi5 cia were all started 1945 1946 1947 this was all decided in the city of london so the cia does not work for the american people it works for the crown officially because that's where it was started and that's who started it and they were all all the agents were recruited from the empire press union so that just shows you the cozy relationship that's always existed between the media and the intelligence services because their main job of an intelligence service is to lie and deceive and what better way to do that than in control the media and the corporations that own the media which they do so the pilgrim society members then became the business roundtable organized into the business roundtable about 1910 and this is where the balfour declaration was decided on this is where uh, Cecil Rhodes was told to go to South Africa and run the show there. This is where, you know, the Kuhn Loeb family and the Carnegie's and the Rockefellers were told to go to the U.S. and take control of this. And, 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 and everybody had a role. And, of course, the Balfour Declaration was written uh, to Sir Walter Rothschild, who was on the business roundtable. So all these business roundtables popped up everywhere. You still, they still exist, by the way along with the Atlantic Council, which is another uh, one of the tools that they use to keep us kind of Anglophiles, to keep us loving the British while they use us like a rug to do their dirty work around the world. Not the British people, of course, but the crown that controls the city of London and the bankers. Yeah. And, and so um, this all happened about 1910. And before that, 1870, roughly, was when America really took the first hit. Because before that, when we were founded as a nation, people don't realize there was a butcher in every town. There was a seamstress in every town. There was a bakery in every town. There was a horseshoer in every town. Um, everybody had a job, but they ran their own business. Everybody ran their own business. They didn't have employees. They just ran their own business. And then they bartered with the other townspeople. And, and, they, and they made enough money to where they had a little spending money to go to the mercantile and buy a few things they needed. But this was a very decentralized economy where everybody had their own business where everybody was free there were no cartels there were no you know monopoly corporations running anything it was just localized like we want we want localized economies where you don't have to ship stuff on amazon from you know, a billion miles away you can just get everything right there that's how this country started but people don't realize that and it lasted like that for 150 years but about 1870 is when the crown decided to make us to incorporate the United States, make us a corporation. And every state was also made a corporation. Why? Because Andrew Jackson tried to get rid of the Bank of the United States, which Alexander Hamilton got his way, pushed through when we were founded against the it wishes of Thomas Jefferson and James Monroe and John Adams and several people who were against it, wanted a public central bank controlled by the government, but the government issues the currency. That didn't go. Hamilton's people won out. Had the gunfight with Aaron Burr because of it, um, and and they started the Bank of the United States. But then Andrew Jackson came along, and Andrew Jackson um, 
for all his other faults because he was genocide and Indians and a lot of bad things. Okay. But he did stand up to the bankers and he did say, you know, I mean, you got to read some of Andrew Jackson's quotes. I have some of them in my book, but he's like, I will route out this den of vipers. And he just talks all about the, the, the Masons, the Rothschilds, the Illuminati, the network. Every, I mean, it's all right there. Our, our, our forefathers knew all about this stuff. This is not new. And he tried to get rid of them. So he did get rid of them for a while. And they, they nationalized essentially the, the central bank. But then they sprung the war of 1812 on him. And then Lincoln issued greenbacks. And that was also in, in protest of the Rothschild because they were running him down through uh, August Belmont was his secretary of treasury. And they used and Belmont was a crown agent. That's where the Belmont stakes is named after because they love to name things after these people. And, and Belmont went after him and all the bankers and they said, oh, you know, Lincoln's a hick. He's a country hick. He does. He's dumb. And they just they, they circulated what they called the hazard circular to turn people against Lincoln because he'd issued these greenbacks, which were in opposition to the, the Bank of the United States issued Rothschild controlled currency. And he paid the Union troops in greenbacks. Well, within a year of that, he was assassinated. Kennedy did the same thing about 100 years later by issuing a silverback currency. It wasn't killed because of Cuba. He wasn't killed because he wanted to pull out of Vietnam, although he did. He was mainly killed because he issued the silverback currency. And there's a Masonic obelisk in Dallas where he was assassinated on Dealey Plaza to this day. And, and so he was also assassinated. But Jackson came back and they started the Bank of the United States, too. And they got that pushed through. And or, I mean, not the, the Bank of the United States, too, was the bad guys. That's they. So they so they stopped the Bank of the United States one for a time had a public central bank, and then they came back because they had us in debt now from the Civil War. The British crown was behind the Civil War, behind the South. So any Confederate out there thinks that's cool, put your flag away because you're a traitor. You ought to be hung. It's true. And 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 all the Southern planters were is still very British down the South, and, and tobacco was key, and they, they were behind the slave trade. Of course they were. The Royal Africa Company was behind all the slave trade everywhere. Royal Africa Company had one shale hurl. There was King James II, the guy that wrote the Bible. Don't trust that Bible. It's lies. And and they and the East India Company was the other company, obviously, that had the slaves. And they would take the slaves mostly from Mozambique to Indonesia, the Spice Islands. That's where they first got their resources. And then India later. But so we were in debt anyway. And they forced us into because we were in debt, we needed to borrow money. They got the money. You know, we were forced back into this bank, the United States, too. And that was about, yeah, 1870. What Civil War? Lincoln was assassinated in 1865. So about 1870, we're in debt. We go back to the private and they say, look, here's part of the deal. you got to be a corporation now. And they made us a corporation. They made us uh, they made every state a corporation. And now they've made every country a corporation around the world since then state of israel is a corporation registered in the city of london that's true um we then got the robber barons and because they were crown agents and so the vanderbilts and the and the, and the morgans they funded all the railroads expanded west killed a bunch of indians got a bunch of land for free for doing nothing they were given all this land they were supposed to build spur lines off the main lines to service towns so the towns would have access to send their grain and send their stuff they never built those spur lines but they still got the land to this day, except now they're selling it like in Montana, where I used to live. They're selling lakefront property where these spur lines were supposed to go for, you know, like two million dollars for a lot. And, and they get the money. And so, again, just more corporate welfare for the bloodlines. Right. But that whole time was bad. And that's where it really turned around. And then in 1913, we got the Federal Reserve and that officially sealed it. And then here comes the Balfour Declaration, 1917. Rockefeller Foundation found it about that same time um, to, to basically launder money because all these foundations, they just launder money. And, you know, it's like a PR thing for them. You think they're good, but they're bad. And they're just steering social policy in a bad way. That's what foundations do. Right. And 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 so that came along. And then, you know, the Russian Revolution came along and um, all these things were happening in the 1910s round table like i say about 1910 so all these things happened at the same time that really consolidated the power of the crown and then um we went bankrupt after world war ii fdr said we got to call on the gold why because now at that point your birth certificate's collateral and, and now you're being traded on the new york stock exchange your birth certificate every one of our birth certificates capital letters 
it's all in cap anything in capital letters that means you're you're basically owned by the crown and every time you pay your taxes you're paying tribute to the crown that's what you're doing because the irs just takes that money and pays off the debt that the eight families that own our central bank um put us into you know it's not the chinese it's not the japanese that we're in debt to that's another myth maybe the chinese have a billion a trillion dollars of our debt maybe the japanese have another trillion maybe the saudis kuwaitis and the middle eastern sheikhs have another trillion that still leaves like 31 trillion so who, who are we in debt to no no we're in debt to the rothschilds the goldman sachs the coon lobes the warburgs to the israel moses saifs you know the rockefellers these eight families that own 52 percent fact of the of the new york federal reserve which is by far the most powerful of the federal reserve branches all the federal reserve is not complicated it's just a private bank cartel um so the bigger the banks again just like city of london the more power they have at the federal reserve and the only thing federal about the federal reserve is the fed board of governors and even that comes from the bankers so they're all, all the board of governors are coming from wells fargo bank of america jp morgan chase city group the forestman of banking i call them just like i call the forestman of oil exxon mobil chevron texaco royal dutch shell bp amico and it's apocalyptic yes for sure by the way so anyway next phase comes fdr calls in the gold we're all then enslaved pretty much then comes bush and clinton era bush and clinton era very significant tony blair all this stuff in iraq i'm protesting it in missoula i'm 28 30 years ago and i'm already saying no stop the war and you know people are sent over there to, yeah to die to get maimed you know the gig right juan's a marine he knows so for what for a million iraqi dead a million you know um nothing big right and to try to take over that country in the end we're defeated the iranians run it now great um we haven't won a war since what world war ii um yeah because korea still unresolved vietnam no afghanistan left the weapons took off iraq now in iranian control syria went after assad no nope, lost that one we don't really win wars but they don't care because they're just making money you know raytheon and lockheed martin and you know the contractors which by the way are all crown corporations lockheed martin is not a u.s corporation it's a crown corporation controlled by the queen the queen or the king now the king has the golden share so they're they're the british um and they're crown so the next phase anyway was clinton bush tony blair margaret thatcher ronald reagan now that whole era where they basically dismantled the state and they said we're gonna have we're gonna privatize everything and we're gonna contract everything including our military to blackwater and whatever and just yeah big free for a wild wild west good, good old medieval days where there's no social safety net at all um and it's just gradually gotten worse and worse and worse to where the only thing public now is like a public library maybe because even the trail systems in this country the wilderness areas sometimes you have to pay to get on these trails now it's just ridiculous we own that you have to pay to get on beaches in florida where i'm at right now some places we own that but no they just let the rich people the hedge funds just vacuum clean up all the wealth of this country throw it in the stock market and speculation the poor people the middle class the average people get nothing it's soaked so that was when you know before reagan you could not as a corporation take money offshore you had to leave us dollars here you couldn't you couldn't trade them offshore you had to unless you were buying goods then you're allowed to to put them in a bank overseas and buy the goods and that was the end of it but reagan and thatcher deregulated the banks and here comes the offshore banking big time here comes the euro dollar and the euro dollar is is basically a u.s dollar traded outside of u.s borders that's all it is but that was never allowed to happen so what happened was this giant sucking sound where all the wealth of the united states was taken away by the corporations and put in offshore banking centers run by who the bank of england in the city of london which has all the numbered accounts and we can't even know who owns these accounts and then george soros and all these minions sir jeffrey patty he's the latest he runs soros's open society now he also controls dominion voting he controls uh he controls all the voting machine companies you know uh smartmatic what's the other one diebold every single company is is controlled by the crown and so they do rig the elections of course they, it wasn't just trump they rigged it on it they've been rigging elections for a long time yeah. ever since they got the voting machines and that's the key <coughs> so anyway yeah they deregulated it all and so the money went away the money went away and then the jobs went away 
here comes these free trade agreements. You know, oh, you can go anywhere, you can you can do anything, and and, and you can go to China and sign to detente and use them and pay them a dollar a day, and Walmart will get rich and take over everything in this country, and every other big corporation will prosper. And American people's standard of living will continue to decline and it's still declining to this day. So that's a short story, but it's all all these offshore. I don't care if it's Marshall Islands or if it's Vanuatu or Bermuda, Bahamas or Cayman Islands. It's all controlled by the city of London, and it's all unregulated. So this is where the petrodollar money goes to. You know, Volcker went in '73 to the Kuwaitis and the Nigerians. He said, "You have the best crude in the world. It's the lightest crude. It's it's the sweet stuff that we use for airline fuel. You know, the really good stuff, light crude, Bonnie Light. They call it in Nigeria." He said, "You guys make." The deal with me that you'll only buy your oil in US dollars and I'll make your crude the benchmark crude. And they did it. And so ever since then, we haven't been on the gold standard. Nixon ditched that in what, 75? We've been on the petroleum standard. But that's about to end because the United States is going to be defeated and Israel and may hopefully the crown is going to be defeated in this war. And we're working on it right now. They're not even insuring ships now that go through the Red Sea. Lloyds of London. Uh, is not even the big powerful Lloyd's line. They're not even insuring. So Maersk, for example, the huge big bloodline owned shipping company, AP Maersk Moeller has, they don't, they don't, they're not sending their ships to the Red Sea. So you're going to see huge inflation. The dollar is going to take a dive and this is going to be an economic war. And they've no, the Palestinians know this, the, the Iranians know this all along. It's a trap. It's like David and Goliath and we're Goliath and we're like, Oh, Oh, where do we hit next? And we can't seem to find them, you know? So the Iranians bombed Pakistan this morning. Maybe you heard that's a base used by the CIA, used by British intelligence to do what? To create ISIS, to train ISIS people. Where does ISIS come from? The Iranian government knows now. I used to tell them on their on press TV interviews. I used to tell them over and over that Daesh is created by the CIA. But they never really acknowledge it. But now on their website, check it out. They know now. That's why they hit the Mossad base in Iraq the same day they hit the ISIS base in Syria, because that's their controllers. And guess what? That Mossad base right beside the U.S. Embassy, in Erbil, in Kurdistan, where all the oil is and where we use the Kurdish people, a semi-autonomous state now, to basically yeah. suck the oil out, steal the oil. Iranians caught us stealing a freighter full of oil the other day. We just steal oil. We're just like pirates. So we're going back to this pirate era because of this deregulation, starting with Reagan and Thatcher. They can do anything they want. Um we get nothing. You know, we, we pay our healthcare.go premiums. And who gets the subsidy? Actually, the insurance companies. Who gets that tax credit? Not me. The insurance companies get that tax credit. Every every agency of this government is captured by corporations, two or three or four. And it's down to that. It's down to these cartels that every industry is controlled by. And they won't do antitrust. Teddy Roosevelt, put it on the books. Clayton Antitrust Act, Sherman Antitrust Act. It's there. The law is there. Use it. But no, they won't, of course, because they're all bought and paid for by the bloodline. And increasingly, the crown just keeps coming in here. Circo's the latest deal. Circo's this contractor. Nobody's heard of it. That's the one where if you saw Julian Assange taken away, it was a Circo van. It's that Circo because they, they do a lot of contracting for like prisons and, and, and police forces and they contract airport, uh, you know, uh, you know, the guys that run the towers, airport, you know, they, they do schools in Australia. They do like uh, they do the driver's license agency. Do they contract with the DMV to do they, they do and, they, and their security for the Navy. They run security for Navy, Army, Air Force, Marines, FBI, CIA for the Five Eyes Alliance. So in other words, Circo is this crown contractor. Again, golden share owned by the king. It's a crown corporation. Officially, this, these things exist. Google it in every country of the world. They exist. And they control they are sitting in a catbird seat where they have intel on our military at all times under this five eyes alliance which is another their latest you know way to control us so and they also run the patent office so they decide which patents they want to steal essentially and give to ibm or give to silicon valley buddies or you know whatever it is google was started by darpa you know facebook was lifelog started by darpa all these social media internet things it's all it's, this is all a big giant mind control operation you now i use it for interviews i leave it it's like a hammer get it out of shop use it get off it because the internet mostly is bad you know mm -hmm. we're doing our best and i think we're doing way better than i thought we could and we're waking people up with it so i use it as a tool but you have to know that behind the scenes this is all designed to mind control people
just like television, you know, except it's interactive now, so you can participate in your own mind control. Yay. So anyway, that's I'm rambling, but that's kind of the, the history I got on it. And um, and that's where we are today. And um, mm-hmm. it's right on the edge of something. It's going to be really bad, but then I think it's going to be really good. Put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yo, thanks for uh, that very extensive uh, and uh, thorough explanation. That's uh, I learned a lot there. So, yeah, thanks. Yes. Uh, thanks. Um, all right, Juan, over to you. Um, my first question, uh, Dean, is the Times of Israel reports, and you know, it's the Times of Israel, so it, it might be propaganda. But anyways, a Palestinian, I don't know if you've seen this this morning, a uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad commander from Gaza was nabbed by the IDF, and he tells the interrogators that he was trained in Iran. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's propaganda, probably. But there's no doubt they're working together. I mean, that's you'd have to be naive. Um, they're working together, but they're loose knit. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, we have to bomb hospitals, ambulances, and schools because Hamas is hiding in the tunnels. You know, I just think they just lie. I mean, the Israelis are liars. That's what they do. That's what they've always done. And they're the best at it I know of any people in the world. And and it's not just the government. The people hate the Palestinians. I'm sorry, but they, they're just bad people, okay? I don't have any time for them. I don't have any time for what they say. I don't have any time for what, you know, it's all propaganda. So, and they probably didn't even capture the guy. Actually, what I've heard is that the, this, this bunch you're talking about, this Iraqi bunch, hit a major Israeli IDF target in the Gaza Strip yesterday. That's what Press yeah. TV is reporting. I saw that. And they're mm. probably doing this to counter that and say, oh, no, actually, we got it. They lie about everything. They're getting their ass kicked, by the way. I mean, there was a Navy SEAL team that I was told uh, went into Gaza initially, tried to get the hostages, the American hostages. They got mowed down. They're done. There's two more Navy SEALs the other day that, that, are, that are done in the Red Sea. Right. These give you know, everybody thinks all oh, these people are omnipotent. You know, uh-uh. The Houthis got way more of this, man. Because the Houthis sit there in Yemen and watch the Saudis and the UAE and the United States give them all the arms to kill a million of their countrymen. When you see that happen, it changes everything. You don't care anymore. And then you're a warrior. And then you're ready to roll. And the Israelis are not ready to roll. They're soft. American troops are soft. Israeli troops are soft. UK troops are soft. They don't have it anymore. We're an empire. Sorry, it's done. Finished. We don't have it anymore. We don't have what our granddads did. We don't have what our great granddads did. We don't have it anymore because we're spoiled and, we, and we're lazy and we're intellectually lazy and we, and we don't do the hard things and we never admit responsibility when we do something wrong. We always, it's always somebody else's fault, you know, and we don't have it anymore, but they have it and they have that hunger. And, and this is uh, this thing in Palestine. It's huge because this is the last bunch of indigenous people really in the world, except for maybe in the deep Amazon or the deep forest in northern Sumatra or Borneo who haven't been conquered and displaced from their land. Think about that. Palestinians are the indigenous people. So this is a huge thing because if this bloodline can, in 8,500 years, can wipe out every single indigenous tribe and enslave them on reservations, and they do, and why do they do it? Because the example the indigenous people show us is the right way to live, that's why. And that scares the hell out of them. You know, they're kind, they're generous. They'll give first. They're not going to shoot first, ask questions later, and be all scared because they're Wetiko, man. Wetiko means cannibal of the soul. And the Cree called it right. That's their word. And the and there's several other words that are synonymous with Wetiko in Native American uh, language. Like the Lakota call it Witko. Like uh, Crazy Horse was Tashunka Witko. Because Witko, because with our language, the same way, crazy can be good, crazy can be bad. You know, it's sometimes it's good to be crazy. But... But they meant it in the other way too. And then the uh, the Apache called it Windigo, right? Now the Gnostics call them Archons, and the Sumerians call them Anunnaki, and the Bible calls them Nephilim or Watchers. But these things have been the, the Muslims call them Jinn. You know th- these things have been around for a long time, and it's this fear. It's just basically simple. It's okay. You can boil it down to this. Indigenous people, natural human beings. Sorry to say there's very few left of them. I love human beings. It's just there's not very many anymore. You know, I feel like I feel like most people, it's not that AI is going to take us over. That's just a red herring. 
that like Trump's a red herring. Like he's going to save you. A billionaire is going to save you. Right? No, it's the same with AI. It's like, it's not going to take you over. <laughs> You're going to become it. <laughs> You're going to become a zombie. You're going to become a phone E, a phony. You're going to become a phone E. And you're going to be glued to your phone. And you're going to get mean because there's demons coming out of that machine that you don't know about. And you're going to be a spaz and you, because of dopamine. Ah, and you're going to go too fast and you're not going to pay attention. You're not going to pay attention anymore to anybody. And you're going to become a narcissist and all this other stuff. But you can go that way, become a machine. Then you join the, the cult. You join the bloodline cult. That's what they want you to do. This is a cult. They want you in it. They want to assimilate you just like they assimilated the native people. You know, they refused to recognize the value of their culture because it was free. It was egalitarian. It was kind. It went against everything the Royal Society stood for. And the Royal Society funded all the philosophers like Locke, Malthus, Thomas Hobbes. Have you ever read these guys? I mean, they're all just like, oh, nature is a brutish place and must be conquered and there's too many poor, dirty people and they're going to spread disease. So we should do our best to let their let them die. And I mean, these are the Western philosophers that we still teach our kids in college. It's bullshit, you know, and this Satanism, it's Satanism, because if you don't accept creation, man, as perfect, including your own immune system, so you don't need to get vaxxed, you know, including you don't need a doctor. You fix yourself. You know, these are things we, I don't have health insurance. I'm 58. I've never had it. Why do I need it? Why would I live in fear that something might go wrong? Oh, because the Watiko wants me to live in fear because they run the insurance cartel. That's why. Don't live in fear. It's fear or it's love. And that's your two choices. There's nothing in between anymore. It's out of great love that I hope the Israelis get their ass kicked. Okay? Because that's not diametrically opposed to each other either, like people think. It's another mind control operation. Warriors are brave. Warriors are also loving. You know, Che Guevara was a doctor, man, in Argentina, middle class, upper class, even lifestyle. He could have stayed there. He could have just, no, he went to fight for the Cuban people to free them. And maybe it's not perfect, but it's a damn sight better than what Batista and the mafia had going down there and Santos Traficante and the CIA and all that. Mm -hmm. So it goes together, love and bravery. And really, there's two kinds of people. You can love the people, hate the system, or you can hate the people and love the system and help beat the people down, help beat them down for the system. And that's a clear choice too. And there's nothing in between. You have to pick one of those, but if you get all cynical and all oh, these people, you know, it's all their fault. No, it's not their fault. We're all victims. We're all screwed. We're all controlled. We're all just our grandparents were beheaded by these people in Europe. We have trauma. We have all this like generational trauma that goes on from all the crazy stuff they did to us, but they do all of it. They do the slavery. They did the slavery. They did the genocide of the Indians. You know, they do all the wars. They create pandemics out of basically they poison us and then they call it a germ. And then they say, it's your fault, you dirty peasant. You have germs. Use antibacterial soap. Yeah, and that'll wash out your immune system even more. So all these germ theory people are frauds. That's all Louis Pasteur. That's all Jonas Salk. How many animals died at the hands of Louis Pasteur? All his experiments failed. It's a total crock to put monkeypox in you to try to cure you from monkeypox. It's just so, I mean, it's a, it's a death sentence. And they actually believe this stuff. People actually believe this stuff. Whereas what really happens, they poisoned us with the 5G towers when they rolled them out. People got sick. They had to have a cover. Oh, COVID-19. Yeah, not to say there wasn't a virus. There was because we released it on the Chinese at Wuhan at the military games. And Anthony Fauci and Jeremy Farrar, the Welcome Trust, the Crown's charity, the head of the the head of that lab was the Crown's charity. That was the biggest funder of the Eco Health Alliance, and so they did release a virus on the Chinese, which is the main reason the Chinese don't want to do us now right now. They don't want nothing to do with us. But I'm just saying the 5G towers are what's making people sick. It's the same as back in the polio uh, pandemic, they were spraying DDT all over California. The same in the 1940s, the Asian flu. My mom went into a coma from it, and that was the advent of television. And the same in the 19 teens when they came out with the Spanish flu, that was sonar and radar developed by who? Developed by General Electric, then RCA Corporation for the British Navy. So these radio waves are poisoning people, clearly. 
and they have, they will continue. Even the electric lines come to your house. They're poisoning. They're poisoning you to some extent. So all this luxury and all this affluence and all this high, high lifestyle we've created for ourselves in the end, it's a death trap <laughs> in the end. You know, and so that's where you have to also make your choices. How much do you want to contribute to this beast machine? So just quit shopping if you don't. You know, you don't need much. Everything I own, I'm 58 and it fits in a Ford Fiesta. I drove down here the other day with everything I own. You know, you don't need possessions. They will possess you. You just need truth and you need love and you need to be reciprocating and and, and you need to be generous and, and you need to understand that, that the whole of nature is your relatives. And you don't just take care of your, your immediate family. You don't just take care of your extended family or the human family, but you take care of everything. We have to look out for everything. And this is the way Indians think, Native Native people. And this is the way the Watikos, they can't get it through their heads because the crown has just indoctrinated them, you know, for, yeah, 8,500 years, man, I reckon. Wow. Um, okay, well, I have to go in five minutes. So, Juan, did you want to do the next question? Go ahead. You can do your last question. Yeah, okay, but I mean, I have to go in five, so I... I don't know if I'll be able to hear the whole answer, but I, I guess it's a quick one. I'll be have sure. You ever, <laughs> <laughs> have you try. have you read any any of the Carol Quigley books? Yeah, you, Tragedy and Hope. Sure. Yeah. Anglo American yeah. Establishment. Yeah. He yeah. He um, he seemed to be uh, in the know on some things. Um, other people say you know he was kind of a disinfo guy. I guess you know, and maybe he was telling half truths and. You always have to be careful, but um, but he seemed to be, you know, in the know about it. And I mean, that's the thing, you know, even if you're born into this stuff or, or you work for this stuff, doesn't mean you can't wake up. There's, it's never too late to redeem yourself. You know, it's never too late to to uh, to embrace the creator and reject Satan. You know, it's never too late. And uh, there's there's people, I'm sure, in the Rothschild family who are, turned out to be OK, I think. I mean, I hope. But, you know, so it's never too late. So everybody's an individual. We're all born authentic. God made us all. Everybody's different. That's that's that, and they're trying to change that. Of course, they're trying to monoculture us with this technology and create this hive mind where everybody thinks the same and everybody says the same things. And either on this side of the cheerleaders or that side with the Democrats, Republicans, I don't I'm not either. I don't want any of them. I don't want nothing to do with it because it's just rigged game and mm. it's all a rigged game and, and mind control it is and. And so uh, we're all authentic. So the, the key to everyone's life is to figure out why you're here and what your purpose is and to be yourself, to go out of your way to be different. You know, I don't know you guys do, I'm sure. But, you know, they've got the culture nowadays to where, you know, and that's the way it was like in my day back when I was a young person. I mean, we the radicals were like, we want to be different. We don't want to be like these people anymore. They're crazy. And now it's just the opposite. It's like it's pc or whatever to be like everybody else but this whole woke movement i didn't really get to that but the whole woke movement that's the next phase that's it. actually they quit hiding behind the catholics the protestants and now even science because we've exposed our science as a fraud so now they go behind the woke movement now they're going to tell us how they're going to include everybody and they're going to patronize blacks and patronize transsexuals and patronize women and and you're all going to be included included in what the death camp i mean included in what because all i see is more money going to the top and that's why the woke movement is all funded by the bloodlines it has nothing to do with liberalism or the left or anything in fact it's being used to destroy the left the real left and make us look make make us look like fools because i'm from the left you know and i don't care where you guys are from but i'm i'm, from, I'm a revolutionary i'm like fuck the rich they took our shit. let's take it back we can hang them if we have to i don't care but they're, they're destroying the left, the reputation of the left, by people saying Biden is left. Biden is the most right-wing Democratic president we've ever had. Biden is the biggest war hawk. He was a war hawk senator. He's from Delaware. That's the uh, offshore banking state, you know? So he's a prostitute. He has been his whole life. And I didn't vote for him, but I didn't vote for Trump either. I might vote for Kennedy if he straightens out his shit on Israel. Maybe it's the only chance we have. But, you know, it's just things have changed. And and everybody needs to get rid of the labels and everybody just needs to get along because our main task has to be to, to get rid of these things. And then we can talk about how we want to arrange our society, whether it's capitalism or socialism or a mixed economy, which I'm in favor of, where you have a little of both, you know, where the government could run your central bank. Maybe maybe the government could run the oil industry and take it out of the hands of the cartel. 
mining industry, food processing industry. You take the insurance companies out of the healthcare game and you have single payer healthcare, things like that. Everything else, let it roll, baby. Deregulate the little guy, regulate the big guys, just the opposite of what they're doing now. You know, they regulate the small businesses, they deregulate Walmart. When's the last time they checked the Walmart deli with a food inspector? Probably never. But they'll go into a restaurant where a guy is trying to make a living for his family and they'll give him a hard time. Because why? Because again, the cartels control the government. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for having me. Um, you know, and I want to thank you for all the good work that you've done and are doing and your bravery. And it's always great to meet, you know, some warriors, man. So, you know. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Dean. Been a pleasure. Um, um, I hope that we could do this again, Dean. And uh, like I said, I'll have all the information, your information will be on the description box as as well as your wives and as well as Angry Warhog. Everything will be in the description box. We appreciate your time, your knowledge, your uh, uh, lesson. It was a lesson today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys, man. Thank you so much. All right, okay. have a great day. And we'll do it again soon. Yes, sir. Thank Sounds you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Thanks. Uh, and yep. your, I know that